Welcome back to another edition of the podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside Sonia Sting forward and Nolan Burke. Nolan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you again for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. You know, lots of people during this coronavirus pandemic have turned on Netflix. So what have you been doing during quarantine? Oh, I've been at the start. I was just, yeah, same way, just doing Netflix, playing video games, um, trying to stay active any way I could. Um, then the golf course opened up, so I was golfing a lot. Then um, work opened up, so I've been working a bit. And then I think I'm starting back in the gym on Monday. And I've been I've been actually getting on the ice the last month, like twice a week. So I've been I've been pretty fortunate to to have been able to have the things I have so far. And have you been doing any golfing or any skating with your teammates or friends? Um, just my friends in down down in Peterborough. I haven't. Um, Sarnia is like four and a half hours from Peterborough, so I haven't really made the trip up there yet so yet um but yeah i just golf with my friends and skate with my friends and stuff i've been all actually i have been on the ice with a couple of my teammates down in ajax they met me there so yeah you know golf is one of the good sports that have returned that has returned safely uh have you been watching it um i've been watching it a bit just like i don't watch it live but like i see highlights on youtube and stuff like that so i always walk tune into those and watch in a bit how has your perception on the coronavirus changed since march to where we are today yeah, you know, um, I think it's I think it's crazy. Um, I'm glad stuff's opening up, but I think so. We still got to be careful because it would suck if we had to restart this all over again. So, yeah. Because I caught myself watching um, the Nick or not the Knicks, the um, Oklahoma City Thunder, like the whole highlight of when that got canceled, and I, you know, I was watching that video, and to it, you know, it just made me reflect on where we are today, you know, and like how long of a journey it's been without sports. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's been nuts. Um, I, yeah, just been watching them back a lot of Leafs games, a lot of Raptors games, just like stuff like that. Just trying to get back in any sport possible, really. Yeah, I know. We're so sport deprived that we're grasping at literally anything. Yeah. So getting into your story big here, uh, who influenced you to start hockey? Oh, you know, just my mom and my dad. Um, my mom's my mom's family brothers played hockey and stuff. Um, my dad played hockey growing up and stuff like that. Plays ball hockey. So, um, my my parents are big, a lot of big athletes. So I think they, you know, they just threw me in when I was three and like the ten bits, whatever. And then, yeah, just kept going from there. Was there a player uh, who you wanted to model your game after growing up? Um, I used to I used to um, watch Matt Sundin a lot. That was a guy I grew up watching. A good leader. Um, big guy played the game well played the game with a lot of heart and obviously led the Leafs um, when I, most most when he played there so yeah I think I was a guy I liked watching growing up okay hold on I have to let my dog in give me a second yeah no problem all right all right, uh, I'm going to count us back in because uh, I'll be just uh, that snippet will be cut out. All right. Yeah, no problem. All right. Three, two, one. You know, Matt Sundin was a great leader. You know, he's probably one of the best Leaf players since Austin Matthews and the core they have today. Yeah. Would, um, so would you be able to speak upon your road to where you are today? Like some of the challenges you've had successes uh, or yeah, successes you had challenges you faced? Yeah, um, I think one of the, the biggest step I took was probably minor Bantam. Um, I wasn't a very good skater, so I, in that summer, my mom took me to Lisa Clark. And um, I did a lot of power skating, worked on my edges, and then really major Bantam, I had a really breakout year. And I think that's kind of where it all started. And I had a good year in minor midget, um, good year in junior last year, split time with um, the Pickering Panthers, and, I, and then half with Sarnia too, so... So yeah, I think I think just that journey of just get just I think the biggest thing is constantly growing and constantly getting better every year, and I think that's the biggest thing for me was just getting better every year. Growing up in Peterborough, did you go to a lot of Pete's games? Yeah, I went to I went to a ton of Pete's games. Um, every Thursday night, uh, the minor Pete's had like minor Pete's night. We all got like half price tickets or whatever. So yeah, pretty much every Thursday growing up, my whole whole minor career, I was at the Pete's game. So. Yeah, and good. when and when Sarnia does play uh, Peterborough in uh, Peterborough, does your family come out a lot? Yeah, it's only in the East, we only play the Eastern Conference teams twice, one and one. So we only played them twice. But yeah, my I had all my fa- we rented out the skybox. Um, my mom, my dad, my whole my whole family, all my friends, trainers, everything were all up there. So it was a pretty cool experience for sure playing in that game. You mentioned that you're a huge Leaf fan. Uh, you know, August 1st is the date where the NHL is coming back. How excited does that make you feel? 
Oh, I'm pumped. Um, you know, I think either way, um, it's, I think at least have a good chance. Uh, you know, obviously they're a really good team. I think this break could help break could help them out. Hope, um, solve some stuff. I think Keith's a good coach. So yeah, hopefully they finally can get out. Hopefully they beat Columbus in the qualifying round and hopefully they can solve Boston. That's kind of, that's the biggest thing is if they can solve Boston or not. That's been the thing for the last few years. So, well, I don't think that Leaf fans should take Columbus all that lightly because we saw with them this year that, you know, with their goaltending, they rely heavily on it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Their goalies have been phenomenal and have played, uh, you know, more than what they were projected to. Yeah, no, I know for sure. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, for sure. I agree. We should not take them lightly at all. Um, Elvis, what is it? Mer- Merz Lincolns. Merz Lincolns. Yeah, he was unreal this year. I had a ton of shout outs. I remember shout outs. Um, Obviously, Tortorella is a great defensive coach. He's a great coach with matchups and especially in playoffs. So, no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I am worried about Columbus. But the good thing is, is that even if we lose, you know, we may, may we have a shot at the number one pick. So, yeah, <laughs> just another shot at a superstar exactly. <laughs> like the Leafs need anymore. <laughs> exactly. So you did actually get drafted in the fourth round of the 2018 OHL draft with the Star- Sarnia Sting. Uh, who did you celebrate that moment with? Yeah, uh, my uh, my mom, my dad, and then just my grandparents were here. Um, yeah, it was it was a crazy day. You know, you have your ups and downs. Um, it's 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 yeah, it's it's a really tough day. But um, at the end, it was certainly was a good place for me. I'm glad they chose me. And then yeah, the rest is where it is now. Were you projected to go in the fourth round? Because I know, like my friend Matt uh, Shots, he got drafted in the OHL uh, draft, but he wasn't. Uh, he didn't go where he was projected. Yeah, like. It's, it's tough to know what projections are, right? Because it's like an outside, all the outside scouting agencies and stuff are saying that, you know, like it all depends on really what the teams think. Yeah. Uh, just, I was talking, like my agent kind of gave me a rough patch of where I was going to go. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, fourth fourth was kind of around there. Um, you know, I was I was kind of getting nervous towards towards that. I was like, I was, I, I was kind of getting scared. You know, you see guys that you think oh, you yeah. should go ahead of go and you're like, I should have went there. But you know, it's, it doesn't matter, right? It, it all depends. It doesn't matter really, really where you go. It all depends on how you perform after that. So, yeah. And you, like you mentioned earlier, you did join Sarnia and further playoff run. Uh, how big was that playoff run for your development? Yeah, you know, I think it was huge for my development and my confidence. Um, my team in Pickering, we lost in a play-in game. So our season was done. I went right up to Sarnia after that. And um, I played in the last 13 games, um, had a goal to, uh, to assist. So I I know I, I thought I played pretty good in those last 13 games going to playoffs. Um, I played the first three playoff games. I didn't play the last one. Um, we got swept by Saginaw. But just like that playoff atmosphere, the playoff experience was was pretty cool to be a part of, especially as a 16-year-old. And I didn't I didn't play the year there. So, you know, I was pretty proud of it. And um, it gave me, gave me a good footing going into this, the past season there. So we, did the playoffs ever prepare you for, uh, I guess, the next season? Yeah, um, yeah they – I think they just kind of gave you they they gave you that feeling of you know what it's like to play in those big games and the atmosphere and how like you prepare and stuff like that. So yeah, no, I think I it was really cool to play in those games for sure. Yeah. During your full rookie season, which was this past year, despite you playing thirteen games uh, the year prior, you had ten points in forty four games. Uh, was there someone who led you uh, towards uh, what the OHL life is like? Someone who mentored you? Um. Uh. My. My cousin's husband, Mike Martone, he was the captain of the Peets. I'm not sure if they won a Mem Cup when, you know, when he was the captain. They, I, I can't put, I can't remember. But yeah, no, he was always a big influence to help me get going. Um, I played with Chase Stillman all the way up. So Corey Stillman, coach of Sudbury now. He kind of, kind of always taught us growing up what it was like, and um, just like my other coach Scott Donato, and he coached us from major PB to minor Bantam, I think. Um, he's just like he had. He had many guys get drafted to the OHL and stuff like that. So those are kind of all big mentors that, you know, help me help me get prepared for what it's like. Could you tell us the story of your first OHL goal? Yeah, um, I was I was lucky enough to be playing with Ryan McGregor and Jacob Pro, two very good players in the yeah. league. And yeah, you know, I just I just kind of saw I saw Jacob pass it to McGregor, and I saw McGregor going wide, and I I was like, I'm just gonna go to the net. And actually, it hit the, it hit my last skate, and then I just got a piece of it with my stick, so it wouldn't be kicking. But you know, not the not the prettiest first goal ever, but you know, a goal is a goal, so I can't complain. It was a pretty cool moment for me. 
Jacob Perot, like you mentioned, is a really good player. He's a top prospect for this year's 2020 entry, NHL entry draft and even played in the CHO top prospects game. What has he done through your eyes to catch the eyes of the scouts? Yeah, I know. I think obviously he's a very powerful skater. He's a very powerful stride. He's quick. He can burn defenders. Um, he has really good hands and close. He has an unreal backhand. If you, I don't know if you've ever seen that one move, but he goes forehand, backhand, and it works almost every time. And I think the biggest thing is just his shot. He has a cannon of a shot. It fools goalies. He's quick. It's, you know, it's just like a mix of his offensive ability. You know, it's just like very, very high end skill. And um, obviously, a lot of NHL teams like it. Would you say that his backhand is comparable to one of Patrick Kane, whose backhand is phenomenal? Yeah, I would agree with that statement. Um, yeah, Jacob, he loves the tight angle backhands. He's, he gets it up high quick. It's hard. It's, it fools the goalie. So, yeah, I, I like that comparison. What would you say is most memorable from your rookie season? Um, I think there's a couple things. Um, I think the game in Peterborough was pretty memorable for me. Um, we had a couple good team bonding moments. Um, we went fishing at the start of the year out on Lake. I forget what lake it was, but it was pretty cool. Like we had, there's like a fishing boat, eight or eight rods in it. We just chilled together as a team, so that was pretty good. And then um, I, I had one really memorable game against Oshawa. I had a couple assists. I played really well. So I think those are the three highlights of probably the, of my season. I think. Did your game day routine change at all from the OJHO to the OHO? Yeah, um, it was a lot different in the OJHL where I billeted. Um, there, uh, it's um, I was a there's only allowed two O twos, like two rookies. Yeah. So and a lot of the guys weren't from Pickering; they're from out of town. So it was pretty. Yeah. So it was pretty much um, the only guy from Pickering would pick me up. But I guess it's a lot different in the OHL with just with billets. I I was able to drive myself to the games. I didn't have to rely on anyone for rides, right? So, oh right, yeah. So I kind of just yeah, I just wake up, usually eat eggs bacon get a coffee um go to school well if it's a weekend if it's a weekend i don't go to school i'll just i'll pretty much just chill for a bit watch some tv um if i yeah if, if, if i had a busy last day i'll try to get a nap in or don't get a nap in. like it all depends on really how i'm feeling in the day i don't really have a set routine it just all depends on how i'm feeling and what i think i can do to play the best Many people put player hockey players on this sort of plateau where they're like superheroes. Uh, do you think many people forget that you do go to school and have, uh, you know, other things to do besides just training on hockey? Yeah, no, I agree with that for sure. Um, you know, you see all like you, you go on Twitter after the game and stuff and you see all like the heart. You play a bad game and you're getting ripped on and stuff. Um, yeah, like you just you got to remember, right? We're we're high school kids. We're in grade 11, grade 12 away from our parents, four hours away, like, you know. It is tough, but, you know, at the end of the day, there's pros and cons with everything, and obviously being OHL is the best thing ever, and I love every moment of it. So, yeah, so I think I think that's, yeah, exactly what you said. Um, it's People are tough on you, but, you know, that's expected. You're playing a high level of hockey. Um, there's fans. You're expected to do well, a lot of pressure. So with, with the pressure, you got to perform. So, yeah, it's good. This offseason is unlike any other offseason before. How do you stay busy during a normal offseason? Yeah, you know, normal off season, we're working out every morning. Um, usually Saturday, Sundays off, just to hang out, really, like kind of recover. But you know, every morning you're in the gym, outside and stuff. So, um, this for me, this so far this season, sorry, uh, my trainer got me. I brought got some, put some weights home, brought them home to my house. Um, I bought like a machine that has a pull down, a little bench press, and some legs. So you know, um, we go on a Zoom call Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And we just kind of work out together through everything, make sure everyone's online, everyone's working out. And then um, Tuesdays and Thursdays actually just started up. Um, before that, we I just go down to my local, my high school, and I just do it on the track, um, just like conditioning and like it's like ag agility and quick feet stuff like that. And then now oh, the gyms are open up Monday, so I'll be able to get back to hopefully a normal routine, as normal as I can get so far, right? But um, yeah, yeah. Well, I know that for me, uh, phase three uh, hasn't opened because, uh, uh, you know, with the GTA, they're always ex uh, exempt for, from moving into the phase three or phase four, whatever. Uh, so with phase three coming for you Monday, uh, that brings gyms and cinemas, right? I'm not, I'm not sure about cinemas. I, I, don't, I haven't really paid attention to cinemas, but yeah, but our gym, we're allowed, I think, groups of 10, if that, if that sounds right. I'm not exactly sure, but I think you're allowed groups of 10, a, a session, you have to book in a time or whatever, so... Yeah, so, you know, we just got to got to go with what we can go with. At least I'm getting back in the gym, right? You just got to make the most of what you have. And then, yeah. 
What was the biggest challenge for you as a rookie this season? Um, I, I think a lot of it was just confidence, right? Um, you know, obviously you're a rookie, you're fighting to get in and out of the lineup every night. So you think, you know, you have, you have a bad practice or bad game, you know, your confidence goes down. So I think the biggest thing for me was like riding my highs and then trying to get back out of my lows, you know, I'm mm-hmm. um, just trying to play with confidence, just trying to play my game. And then um, hopefully, you know, try to find, try to play as much as I can, get in the lineup as much as I can. Obviously, the season was uh, horrible for rookies, uh, given the fact that it got canceled uh, due to something we can't even control. How did you find this? How did you find out the season was getting canceled? Yeah, you know, um, we 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 played a game, and I think we played in London, and we had it was like a Friday game, and then there was a practice Saturday, and we had a game Sunday, and I and uh, I think the Friday night, or I, I'm not sure what day it was, but it was like the th- three day span is when the Oklahoma game. When that when someone tested positive, so they canceled that, and then the NHL shut down their season and stuff. So that Saturday at practice, we were getting ready for the next game, but we were all pretty sure that there wouldn't be a game. Like a lot of us, we kind of knew it was gonna be our last practice, but like we didn't know for sure. So yeah, no, it was it was really weird. We were we didn't know anything, but um, then you know our team called us in the next morning. They said we'll have a meeting. The league's gonna talk about it, and I think as soon as the NHL shut down, we had a pretty clear understanding that we were gonna follow suit with them. But, yeah, so that's kind of how that ended. But, yeah, it was crazy for sure. You know, playing a game in March, uh, which is about five or not five months, but, you know, it's a long – it seems like it's a whole different, you know, universe. Yeah. Uh, How odd was it playing your last game against uh, the Gulf Storm? Yeah, um, I was was scratched that game. It was just – I played – it was just – we were – we had a lot of numbers in the year, so we're just kind of getting bodies in and out. But, um, yeah, no, it was – it was a weird game. Um, yeah, it was just uncertainty for sure. So, yeah. We all want fans back in the stands. Um, but, you know, the NFL did send out a memo to its teams uh, saying they can actually uh, have a fan capa- uh, fans in the stands but at a capacity. Do you think the OHL would move in that direction? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think Canada's kind of taking a slower approach than the U.S. The U.S. is kind of just going crazy, opening everything up. and just. So I think Canada's a little different. So yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not really sure. We haven't. We haven't heard anything yet. Um, I'm. I'm still. I have. I have no idea what's going on for the season. So you know, I'm just kind of just keep training, working hard, and then whenever I have to go up, I go up. And about the fans, yeah, no, I'm not sure. It all depends on what the what the government says and what they tell the OHL and, and stuff like that. Would it impact your play at all to have no fans in the stands? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of a lot of the game is momentum. You know, you're at home. The, fans are cheering for you so I, th- I think it would affect games um i'm not really sure what in which way you know they might be might be a little not slower but like you know what i mean like not as much like excitement just because you know you yeah. the fans do provide a big boost when they're all like cheering hard you know it, it does make mm-hmm. you go harder so yeah no i'm not i'm not sure i've never really played without like fans so i'm not yeah I, i'm not really sure how that would even how would it even work and how weird would it for you to be doing interviews like this on an online uh, web conferencing platform for possibly next season? Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I know the draft, the draft's probably going to be online. You know, those guys aren't going to be able to walk up and hear their name called and put on a jersey. It's all going to be online, um, post-game interviews, like all, all that stuff, right? So, no, it's going to be really crazy. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even know how it's even going to work out. But who knows? You know, you just got to adapt and make the most of what we have during this crisis. You know, the OHO does a really good job with teddy bear toss games. Uh, have you been a part of one? Yeah, I was I was a part of the... I got called up to one game two years ago. I'm rookie. I played that. I think I, I scored in that game, actually. That was my first goal. I didn't, I didn't get the teddy bear toss goal, but I scored in that game. So, you know, those games are always so cool. Um, there's... There's, it's always it's always sold out. The teddy bears are everywhere. Um, they're good pictures. Uh, yeah, I know. It's 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 probably the probably the one of the most fun games to play in during the year is the teddy bear toss game. I think all the guys look forward to that a lot. And did your goal silent the crowd? Oh, it was it was home. We were at home. Oh, I was home. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, my bad. I think we beat Saginaw. I think it was Saginaw. I'm not really. I don't really remember. Who was yeah. your roommate on road trips this year? Um, it changed a lot. Um, it was usually, it was usually another rookie. Um, Owen Say, I re- with him a couple of times, um, Ryan Mast, Theo Hill. So just kind of guys, my age rookies, they kind of paired us up together, but I didn't have like, I didn't have like one roommate that I was with all year. What was the toughest building to play in, uh, during the road? Oh, I think London for sure. 
it's just the rivalry we have with London and especially those fans. Once they get going, they're crazy. The place is massive. The fans are wild. It's once, once they get some momentum on their side, it's tough to stop them. So I think London for sure is the toughest to play in. Will you cherish hockey like that much more knowing that it could be taken away from you at any given point? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pumped for the next season. Whenever, whenever it does start, I, I can't wait to get started. And um, yeah, for sure. You know, I, just got to treat every game like it's your last, especially, you know, not, no teams got playoffs. No, no teams got to go to the Mem Cup, anything like that. So, um, yeah, for sure. You know, you got to cherish it. You got to cherish the game and cherish the games you play in. What would you say is your go-to shootout move? Um, I, I, I don't really, ha- I'm like my shootout move. I kind of, I'm not sure. I, I like to go five hole. Like I, I scored three breakaway goals this year, five hole. It kind of, it's a, just a quick back and four and five hole fills the goals, but shootouts it's tougher to do because when like you're going down fast on a breakaway, it's kind of quick. But um, I'm not sure. You know, I like to open the goalies up, maybe do a fake forehand, come back to the backhand stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, th- I think either I think I'd either go five hole or try to do a backhand move. Last question here on the podcast: uh, Do you have any advice for aspiring hockey players that may look up to you? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, enjoy growing up, enjoy the hockey seasons. They go by crazy fast. I, I remember it feels like yesterday I was in minor midget. So, um, you know, just try to get, just keep growing, try to get better every year. Um, I think the biggest thing for me in the summers is I played lacrosse. So in, until, until I think major band and that's when I quit. So I think, yeah, play, play different sports, try different stuff out. Don't focus on hockey. You're going to, or you might get sick of it at a young age, but yeah, no, I think the biggest thing for players uh, especially like growing up and having some players that were unreal when they were younger and they don't get, they weren't good anymore when they get older. Right? I think the biggest thing is just constantly getting better each and every year and just constantly growing as a player and a person. And I think that's the biggest thing. I'd like to thank Sarnia Sting forward Nolan Burke for joining me on today's podcast. Thank you again, Nolan. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me.